Hello and welcome to Anat AV. In this video, we'll be taking through the anatomy of the clavicle, focusing on side determination, special features, surfaces, attachments, and finally applied anatomy. The clavicle is a long bone that transmits a part of the weight of the upper limb to the axial skeleton. We'll start off with side determination. To orient the clavicle properly, one needs to distinguish between the medial and lateral ends and the superior and inferior surfaces. This will also help you figure out if it's a left or right clavicle. The lateral end is flat and the medial end is large and quadrilateral. The medial three-fifths of the shaft is cylindrical, while the lateral two-fifths are flattened. The shaft is slightly curved, being convex forward in its medial two-thirds and concave forwards in its lateral one-third. The inferior surface is grooved in its intermediate two-fifths, and thus we can see that this is a left clavicle. The clavicle has a number of unique features. For one, it is the only long bone that lies horizontally. It is also subcutaneous throughout and can therefore be palpated along its whole length. It's the first bone to start ossifying. It ossifies in membrane and has two primary centers of ossification while the ends ossify in cartilage. Now we'll talk about the features of the shaft. The shaft is divisible into the lateral one-third and the medial two-thirds. The lateral one-third has two borders, anterior and posterior. The anterior border is concave forwards, while the posterior border is convex backwards. This part of the bone has two surfaces, superior and inferior. The superior surface is subcutaneous and the inferior surface presents an elevation called the coronoid tubercle and a ridge called the trapezoid ridge. The medial two-thirds of the shaft is rounded and is said to have four surfaces. The anterior surface is convex forwards while the posterior surface is smooth. The superior surface is rough in its medial part, whereas the lateral half of the inferior surface has a longitudinal subclavian groove, and the nutrient foramen lies at the lateral end of the groove. Moving on to the lateral and medial surfaces. The lateral or acromial end bears a facet that articulates with the acromion process of the scapula to form the acromioclavicular joint. The medial or sternal end is quadrangular and articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sterni to form the sternoclavicular joint. Now we'll talk about the attachments of the clavicle. At the lateral end, the margin of the articular surface for the acromioclavicular joint gives attachment to the joint capsule. At the medial end, the margin of the articular surface for the sternum gives attachment to the fibrous capsule of the sternoclavicular joint all around, the articular disc posterior superiorly, and the interclavicular ligament superior. Considering the attachments of the lateral one-third of the shaft, the anterior border is attached to the deltoid. The posterior border provides attachment to the trapezius. The conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge give attachment to the conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament. Moving on to the medial two-thirds of the shaft, most of the anterior surface gives attachment to the clavicular head of the pectoralis major. The medial half of the rough superior surface is attached to the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid. The oval impression on the inferior surface at the medial end gives attachment to the costoclavicular ligament. The subclavian groove gives attachment to the subclavius muscle. The posterior surface is largely devoid of attachments, except at its medial end where the sternohyoid muscle is attached. Now we'll take a look at the applied anatomy of the clavicle. The clavicle is commonly fractured by falling on an outstretched hand. The most common site of fracture is the junction between the lateral one-third and the medial two-thirds, where the two curvatures of the bone meet, 
and this is the weakest point of the bow. The lateral fragment is displaced downwards by the weight of the upper limb, as the trapezius muscle alone is unable to support its weight. In the congenital anomaly called cleidocranial dysostosis, children are born without the clavicles or with hypoplastic clavicles, as shown in the picture. And that's a wrap of the anatomy of the clavicle video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this video useful and leave a comment down below and share with your friends. See you on the next episode where we talk about the scapula. Thank you for watching Anat AV.